Hey, what's shaking everybody? What's going down? Anyways, I was on my channel checking out the comments I get to see if anybody wanted to argue or fight with me. Knight Templar 7 asked, could you do a Thanksgiving pumpkin theme with a pilgrim hat? So that's what we're going to do in this video tutorial. There are some requests that I get here that are very complex scripting requests, but if it's something like a design request, I can easily accommodate that. And this pumpkin, uh, the pilgrim hat, on a pumpkin thing I can do very quickly and since we already made the pumpkin we're halfway done let's just make the pilgrim hat on top of the pumpkin and let's go come on and here is the finished product of the pilgrim hat that you're going to be learning how to create in this lesson okay here we are with the pumpkin that we left off with after lesson one of creating the vector pumpkin and you can tell if you're dead center by that line showing up you see when I move it is that dotted line that shows up in the center that lets me know it's dead center and then I have lots of room on top to draw the hat now let's grab an ellipse and you want to draw that out to the kind of the 3D view that you want to have and I want mine to have a 3D view sort of like that I guess maybe a little bit wider like that then I'm going to take it and bring it down a little bit and make sure that's dead center I'm gonna click my pumpkin and see I have a width of 534 on my pumpkin so let's make sure this is an even number as well and it is it's 670 and when I move it it hits dead center and I leave it there now you just bring that down onto your pumpkin wherever you want I'm gonna put mine right there and remember in video 2 we carved a face into that pumpkin and you can have any kind of face you want carved into this if you want a face in it but a lot of people might just want to have a pumpkin with a pilgrim hat on it as a little icon or graphic on their website so this thing we are going to make solid black now let's press control C control V to make a copy of that you see but you don't have to move it leave it where it was and just use your keyboard arrow keys to move it up you can even make it a different color let's make it this orange for now let's move it up to about right there till we have a 3D disk looking thing and if you go up too much you'll see that you'll ruin the 3D aspect of it on the edge here so you just bring it down a little bit and if you want you want to have a lot of depth you can put it like that and then just connect these two points with a shape I'll show you how to do that let's go here let's zoom in and all we need is really a really tiny rectangle and just draw the rectangle in to match those two areas and make it solid black or whatever color you want to be behind there now grab this tool uh, ellipse the orange one and press control shift up arrow key to bring it to the top and then you can give that disc any kind of depth that it needs that's going to be the brim of the hat let's see let's bring it up one pixel right there looks perfect we'll do the same thing to the other side and really the best thing to do would be to get this shape to be all one piece and let's see let's highlight these four items let's just highlight everything and then deselect hold shift to deselect the pumpkin so you can see I just have this stuff up here highlighted but don't move it now what we're gonna do is deselect by holding shift we're gonna deselect this orange disk on top so now I have just three items selected the black ones I'm going to go to modify combine paths and I'm gonna union those now that's a solid shape that I can then punch out with this one so I'm going to press control C control V and I'll make this shape whatever color I want You see how it's blue I'll highlight that one that's on top of my orange one and I'm gonna highlight the black shape underneath those two shapes I'm gonna to go to modify combine paths and punch now what you're left with is a nice little 3d perspective little brim type thing but you don't want to move that one on top and you can give gradients to this now which might come in handy for you if you want to make it say you wanted to make just the edge shine you can add gradients to that to make it look shiny or beveled whatever you want now let's highlight this and put a gradient on that gradient linear and where it's white on top let's go ahead and make that black and where it's orange on the bottom let's go ahead and make that a gray like that And I'm gonna move up now and you'll notice that any character that you have underneath this would sort of need some kind of shadow let's move this down a little bit 
it'll need some sign of shadow because the brim of the hat will be shadowing their face a little bit so if there's any light coming from above them you'll want to take shadowing into consideration and that's easy to do you can just come here and put a point here and then come all the way across put a point right about here and then let go and then get your mouse on this point again click and hold down this time and then just pull you see and you can pull a shape that's going to shadow the face there and we'll make that solid black solid black now we're going to highlight these two and bring them to front by control shift up arrow key and then this one we're going to give a filter of blur Gaussian blur and you can set that to be as blurry or as crispy as you need it to be I'm going to put mine right about there press OK then I'm going to bring the opacity down to something like that then you'll you'll notice that whatever background this might mess up your background so you, if you don't want that shadow to be in this white area here you can go to modify flatten selection and then just take your eraser and simply erase that Oop, I went too far control Z there just don't go too far and you won't show any of the pumpkin but you'll erase that that might be interfering with your background alright now let's move up and start working on the top of the hat. Now pilgrim hats have a distinctive shape and I notice a lot of the times when people make them they're shaped all kind of just uh, squared off and pointy but it has some roundness to it rounded edges sort of. So what we're gonna do is start right about here I'm gonna click let go so right about there we're gonna click hold down and curve that line just a little bit then we're gonna go up and once we get right about to here we want it to curve but not too much so we're going to click down here and then we can let go after that click and we're free to put the next point now so we're going to put the next point right about here and right there you put a curve you click and hold down and let and leave a curve and then you come out to right about here where it's kind of flat on top round that off a little hold and round it just a little bit click down and come down to meet this point down here and then right there and if your points don't exactly match you can grab just this one by grabbing the sub selection tool here and grab just that point use your arrow keys and your keyboard to move it down so everything is lined up then you give that thing a black fill remove the edge on it and this top one I'm gonna bring that point up here down just a little bit right there then I'm gonna highlight that shape using my regular pointer highlight it press control C control V now I have a copy see and I'm going to flip that copy flip it horizontally and I'm gonna put it in place where it looks like it should go then I'll select both of those modify combine paths and union and if the union lines seem funny don't even worry about it, it doesn't even matter but what you want to do now is take that object and get it dead center with everything else put it on the hat where you think it looks like it should go there and then we're gonna give it a gradient gradient of bars and you see that you want the outside bars to be black which they are and the inside bar you want that to be very dark like that you can even make it a little bit brighter if you want and it won't hurt it right about like that there we go now this next shape that we're gonna draw you can just deselect everything hit the pen tool again I'm gonna click down there and let go Then I'm gonna go to right about here click down you see I'm not at the very edge yet and then I'm gonna go right down a little bit and beyond the edge a little bit click down let go curve that point a little bit and then to where I'm going into a downwards direction with my mouse and I haven't let go of that point yet now I'm gonna let go I'm gonna come down to right about here make sure I get over this point here right about there and then I'll come to a 45 degree angle down and to the right this way and then click down and hold and drag again to where it gives it a rounded corner and then you want to get your mouse direction going towards this way when you let go right about that direction not up like that and not too far down right about like that and then let go and then come to a right about here to the center click down and curve that edge not too much maybe right about there then click down on this point to make a sharp corner and then click down here 
And now we can give that a black fill and remove the edge on it. Make sure it's in a good position. Something like that looks good. All right, now we're going to copy this. Control C, Control V, flip horizontal, move it over to the other side. Make sure it matches up, and we want that one to be about right there. So what we'll do is connect them. Let's go ahead and union those. Highlight both of them by holding Shift as you select them. Modify, Combine Paths, Union. Now we can make sure that this thing is a little bit wider now. Just grab your uh, scale tool and widen it. That looks pretty good. And this point I'm going to bring up just a little bit. Actually I'll zoom in and both of those points have to go up to where they match. And there you go. That looks like a good curvature for that. And now all we need is the buckle, the gold buckle. And actually before I put the buckle on there I'm going to grab these two items and I'm going to widen that brim. So I'll just grab my regular selector tool, grab those two things. I'm going to move the brim over here. I want it to be about that wide instead. And then move this side over to be an even number as well. And then I can move those to where they hit dead center once again. And you can make the the brim of the hat as wide as you need it to be. Alright, I'm going to show you a cool little trick on this brim now. You can highlight your sub selection tool and go ahead and make a box that covers those three points that are going to be there. Or there's three or four points there. Just make sure you highlight that whole edge and you'll get all those points. Now watch this, if you push down on your arrow key, just those points will move down. And that puts a curvature on the brim, you see? And I'm going to curve it down just a little bit. I don't want a very dramatic curve. So I'm going to press Control Z to where it's flat again. And I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Then I'm going to go over here, same thing. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Okay, now the buckle is simple. We'll just grab a, let's do a rectangle. Draw it in right about here. And you can make it perfectly square by holding the Shift key while you're dragging that. I'm going to make it about that big. I'm going to make sure it's dead center. I'm just going to make that solid. Make it a gold color. Somewhere right about uh, there, I guess. OK. And I'm going to round that rectangle right about like that. Then I'm going to press Control c Control v to make a copy. I'm going to make this copy black. I'm going to put it on top again. And I'm going to resize that with my scale tool. Once I get it in the dead center of those two items, let's see, that one's 123 wide, this one's 147. Let's make this 148 wide. Make this one 124 wide. So the bottom would be 148 as well. And this 140, 124 as well. There, I think that's about right. Or maybe that's more right. There we go. It's just as long as that black one's in the dead center. And you can make that black one in any size you want. I'm going to make it actually 120 so I have a more a thick buckle up there. Now I can highlight both of those together, go to Modify, Combine Paths, and Punch. Now your shape is just that gold buckle shape. Then you go to Filter, Bevel and Emboss, Inner Bevel, make the type smooth, bring this all the way up, bring this all the way up, and bring this all the way up. Then move your angle to where it's 90 degrees, uh, 90 right there. And if you don't want such a dramatic beveled effect, you can you can lessen that. Bring this down to maybe something like that, 41, something like that. Okay, that looks decent. And you can add any kind of gradients you want to this thing now. You can also kind of make this look woolly if you want by giving it a texture of, let's try that grain, see what happens. See? Makes it look a little woolly. You can also add the grain to that. And you can add, to make that look felt, you can give that swirls or something, or swish and bring it down a lot maybe it's even to right about eight and that, that'll that look like felt a little bit now this I'm gonna give it an inner glow on that uh, buckle glow inner glow bring it to about two sixty five looks good put that on about three and that looks good to me and I'm gonna remove the textures I was just showing you that if you wanted to put texture on those to make it look woolly a little bit you can but I'm going to shrink this down. It'll be a little icon or graphic on the page. I really won't even be able to notice that. 
and if you want this shadow to be darker you can press control C control V and just put another copy of it on top of itself now we can go to that's a little bit too much you can bring the opacity down on one there we go now I'm gonna highlight all of that and see what it's gonna look like as a shrunken graphic for a web page press control C control V to make a copy of everything go to modify flatten selection and then we can really make this thing small the size that we would really reduce it to to be on a web page so let's look at a hundred percent and I would want it on my web page maybe right about that size so that looks really good at a medium size and then at a really small icon size it still looks really good you can see all of your effects on that looks like it's 3d and shadowed and everything is great a little tiny pilgrim hat you can put on all the pilgrim pumpkins